I'm going to tell you how I set 60,000 bucks on fire. Okay, so let me set this up for you. Um, 2008, financial crisis hit. Uh, everything, you know, the crap hit the fan. I don't know if it did for you, but it did for us. Everything went down. Uh, we got really stingy uh, with money and the way we were spending. And uh, me and my wife went to work, man. And we saved up uh, a good little nest egg. Like uh, in a few years, we had about 60 grand. And, uh, and we were holding on to that. That was our emergency fund. Well, I got sidetracked. At, you know, after a few years, everything's rolling good again. Well, I get sidetracked and take my eyes off the business and start thinking about, all right, well, how can we expand? How can we do, you know, how can we do more? Well, that gummit, I got a stock tip, a hot tip on how you could make 20 grand in two weeks with that 60. So I was fixing to turn that 60 into 80. Uh, I'm a business guy and I'm a, um, you know, I, I'm a risk taker, but I'm not a gambler. Or so I thought I wasn't a gambler, but I'm fixing to take my 60 grand and I'm fixing to bet it to try to make 80. So the stock tip is this. You, you do a put, and I didn't even know what a put was. If you don't know what a put is, I know now it, it's you take and you say that you are going to pay a specific amount for a stock at a specific later date. All right, so if the stock goes up, you make money. If the stock goes down, you lose money. <whistles> who, who knew the stock could go down, right? Okay, everybody knows stocks can go down, but I'm freaking blinded by $20,000 in two weeks. I do the put, and I remember vividly, me and my wife were spending a weekend in Atlanta. We were getting on the elevator coming down from the third floor of this hotel just as I hit the L button on the, on the elevator. My gosh, my phone dinged. I looked down. I didn't go from 60 to 80. I went from 60 to virtually zero. Zero. By the way, I'm still married to her. Like, she didn't leave me. She was really pissed about it, though. And it, it took us a while to work past that. I just lost all our money that we've been working for. I'm not telling you not to invest in the stock market. I still have stocks and mutual funds, but I don't bet anymore. I'm playing the long game. I'm taking Warren Buffett's advice and buying stocks and holding them, playing the long game. So in this fiasco, I learned four different things. Might be able to help you. Number one is the stock market can either be an investment vehicle or it can be a crap table. You choose. Don't choose the crap table, by the way. The second thing, if you play a game with money and no experience, you'll end the game with plenty of experience and no money. The third thing, if you hear a tip on a stock that says it's hot, it's already flamed out. By the time you hear hot, it's, uh, it's not. The fourth thing is the lure of easy money is strong and it's usually wrong. You can take that to the bank. All that being said, let's switch gears for a second. People, I find that people are a lot like other things and people are a lot like stocks. We invest in people, but we're not investing capital in people. We invest uh, our love, our time. We invest forgiveness, grace, mercy, Think about that. We invest in other people, and then a lot of times they have downturns. Sometimes you think they're going all the way to zero, and it hurts, man. It hurts my heart to see somebody that you invest time and, uh, and effort into, and then they turn around and they're heading straight, straight down. It'll, I mean, it just wears you out, man. Wears my mind out, wears my heart out, and I hate to see somebody go down. But let me tell you, they're not like stocks in another sense. A person, if they're still breathing and they're still living, then there's still hope. You keep investing. So the takeaway is don't bet on people. Don't roll the dice on people. Play the long game on people and keep pressing toward the mark.